welcome to another episode of Disaster Empire Quick Views. This is the podcast where we talk to thought leaders and innovators in resilience. And I am thrilled to have Alice Kalt Mark from Nexus Lexus with me here today. And we're going to have a fun topic um, for you guys this time around. We're going to be talking about her experience with the Business Continuity Institute and the value of volunteering within our industry. So Alice, welcome and thank you so much. Welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you so much, Ashley. I was honored to be asked and uh, I'm looking forward to a great conversation. Excellent. Well, I know the audience wants us to get right to it, so we're going to dive in. I'll just start off with kind of the basic question. What really inspired you to want to volunteer within the industry and particularly with the Business Continuity Institute? And can you share a little bit along uh, with that about how, what's your perspective on giving back to the industry? Interesting. I actually didn't start with the BCI from a volunteer perspective, but I did get involved with our local regional organization, Cotton Professionals of Ohio. Okay. And I, I'm just the type of person I like to be in charge. I like to be part of the group <laughs> driving the show. So early on when I was uh, joined CPO, I raised my hand and became part of the leadership team. In fact, I'm still part of the leadership team of CPO. But as I was doing that, I had been talking with some other folks and met them at conferences, et cetera. And and learned more about the BCI and actually joined the BCI in 2012 is when I actually became an official member of the BCI and did that alternate path into membership and took my DRI certification into the BCI. And the reason why I was even interested was because of my DRI instructor explained to me the value of the BCI. Business Continuity Institute has just so much to offer their members, thought leadership, the articles, blogs, the just networking opportunities. It's not so much about the certification, which is important. Obviously, we all need those credentials to further our careers, but it it's more about the community, the resilience community and the community of professionals getting together and helping each other out. And that it just speaks to me. I like to help others fulfill their potential. It's part of what I liked about being a manager uh, before I even got into the resilience um, industry and then really part of just giving back. So it's part of my nature. So I always look for opportunities to do that. With the BCI, you know, I had been president of CPO and was doing a lot there and the annual elections came around, you know, and there was an opening for the U.S. Uh, for the USA to be able to have a, more members on the USA chapter board. And I thought, well, I'd like to do that. You know, that's big time. Uh, you know, I'm getting brought in, you know, stretching my wings outside of Ohio and looking at national. And it's like, you know what? I have nothing to lose. So I raised my hand and I said, I'd like to run for uh, for the USA chapter board. I got elected. This was in 2015. I was shocked. <laughs> Actually, it's was like, oh, wow. Uh, in fact, I got elected the same time as Heather Merchant and um, Sean. And I'm drawing a blank on Sean's last thing. He's with BDO now. But uh, Sean and I and Heather all came onto the board at the same time. And, you know, we really started gelling as a team with with the current board. It was Brian Zawada. He was the president. John Jackson as the vice president. Um, Ted Brown was on the board as well, along with Frank Lady. I mean, some real powerhouses from the resilience community. And it was a great opportunity to start contributing at a national level and then beyond that at a global level. So that's how I started. I raised my hand. There was an opportunity. I said, let's try it. I had nothing to lose. Um, and I have never regretted raising my hand to run up, be part of the chapter board. Um, held many roles while I was served on the chapter board. I was an uh, official member for six years, and then I rolled off because you're only limited to a 
a maximum of six years on the board. And then I rolled off into an advisory role. And now that's even completed. But I eventually became um, treasurer, then vice president, and then president of the chapter. And during that process, I really got to meet so many people. We were very active and engaged with DRJ, just meeting leaders across the industry, getting to know them as people, as well as collaborating and finding out, you know what, people really do want to listen to what I have to say. And that was, you know, you never know until you raise your hand. And But by raising my hand and running on the board, I then not only was I growing, I was growing my executive speak, my executive management skills, my speaking skills, and it was very rewarding because not only was I making a difference for the members across the USA chapter, but I was also making a difference for me and personally. Well, with the BCI, there are so many ways you can volunteer. It is a member-owned organization. It's member-run. Um, yes, the central office has a few paid positions that you got with an organization as large as the BCI is. You there are some paid positions that you know that kind of take care of the business of the BCI. But when you look at the chapters and the board and the overall benefit to the community, it comes from the members giving back. While I was there, uh, they said, well, we need a rep USA chapter needs to represent on the members committee, which has now evolved. And I'm like, I'll do that. I'm, I have no problem. I'll do that. <laughs> uh, but again, I got to then extend beyond, got outside of the U.S. boundaries and started working with people like Michael Croymans from the Netherlands. Um, you know, I met Glenn Redstall and Pete Frailinghouse. They're both now uh, board members of the BCI. So it's, I met so many people, but I found out we have as much as many differences as we have because of we're from different countries, et cetera, we have a lot of the same issues. And we're all coming from different perspectives and different backgrounds. And the way we might deal with our issues is differently. But because there's that common core, we have a lot to talk about and to share and to learn from each other. And it is a very welcoming community and it's one of the best places to be as far as I can see. But so I went on from there. Again, we need some people to help with judging awards. So uh, I'll try that. Uh, so I've been an awards judge for several years now. Um, that's another way to, like, to learn and to give back. Now I'm looking at, well, what are the people doing in other countries? What are the, what's the innovation that they're doing and learning? And it's like, it was really cool to see what people are doing across the globe. Uh, learning about the differences between the cultures. Um, there's just so much to learn. And I find it all rewarding in various different ways. But again, it's we put the call out for help. And then we need people like me and you um, and those that are listening. You, what we need you to do is just raise your hand, take a risk, do what you're comfortable doing. Maybe stretch your wings a little bit and lean in. Maybe I'm not so sure. We'll try it. It's okay if you get in and say, this is not for me. We all understand because sometimes you don't know until you do it. That's okay. But if you come in and you go, I really want to do it, but I really am not comfortable. I need help. We're there to help each other. So um, that I know I'm kind of rambling around and going along. Route, but the what actually got your attention and why you reached out to me was my uh, involvement in the program advisory group right. for the BCI World Conference. Uh, again, another request went out. Um, actually, Sergio reached out to me. Sergio uh, and I, don't, I'm not going to try his last name because <laughs> it's a hyphenated Italian, I uh, know, Spanish name. I, I, oh, he. He'd be upset with me if I called him Italian. <laughs> you know how it goes. <laughs> anyway, um, it, he reached out and said, Alice, I'd like you to be a part of the, the group. And I'm like, sure. Well, in, the, in doing that, you know what I get to do? And it's, there's some good amount of work there. 
but you have an opportunity to review all the proposals, uh, speaker proposals that come in and really see all the different things going on across the globe and the things that people want to talk about. Everything from the very basic, you know, back to basics, all the way to the cutting edge, you know, you know, new innovations. I mean, I remember when Illuminaire came first came onto the scene, you know, and talking to them. And I was talking to Vaidi out of uh, in Alango out of India and the things that they were doing with gamification and Illuminaire's doing more. And it just mm-hmm. so exciting because you're like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah. And you can immediately start seeing how you can apply that elsewhere. So, uh, again, I'm a way to broaden that network, get to know more people, learn about what other organizations are doing. So, I get, you know, did that. You actually are part of something that really is giving back to the community. And this last conference was awesome. I mean, I think it really was the best BCI world we've ever put on, at least since I've been part of the BCI. Um, the That's quality of the content was amazing. And then just the, the rapport between the vendors and exhibitors and the attendees. It was a true community. It wasn't the, the vendors off on, in another room, you know, that you have to walk down a long hall to get to. They right. were there part of the mm-hmm. whole event. And it really made a difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we Great also did the hybrid deal where we have people in physical, we have people attending virtually, and we had a chat feature where we were able to blend that experience. And I was able to do that as part of being part of the committee. I was charged with doing that communication and helping to bring the virtual audience into the full experience as much as possible to the physical um, event. And I, it was just a blast. More of them wore me out, I'll tell you that. It was a lot. But it was so rewarding. I took away so much. And I this sense of satisfaction that I truly did make a contribution to uh, making a difference in other people's lives and helping them to celebrate and advance their, uh, their careers and grow their networks. So... It's a win-win all the way around from my perspective. Alice, you shared so much there and just wanted to hit on a couple things. If members of the audience are newer to the field and not aware, BCI is the Business Continuity Institute out of the UK that really has traditionally supported a very global uh, approach and is also a certifying body. And then you talked about DRI or DRI, so our Disaster Recovery Institute International. Right. We'll have the links all down below because sometimes I forget what does that actually mean, that acronym. Um, and so they've been, even though international is the name, they've been more traditionally, maybe domestically US focused, yeah. but certainly they, the two certification bodies offer trainings, offer conferences, and they, they do align, which is great. And then DRJ, which you shared, which is our longest running conference in the DR and, and business continuity industry, um, I think over 30 years now. And mm-hmm. uh, they that's a disaster recovery journal. So we'll give those links for the audience below. But, you know, some of your main points you were talking about, the importance of networking, the importance of, you know, just raising your hand and taking that opportunity to volunteer. And I just wanted to share that I really believe in our industry it's you don't have to have five, 10, 20 years of expertise. You know, if you're a young professional and want to get in there and learn and participate and, and get all of those opportunities, I really think that, you know, we as a, excuse me, as a community will definitely, you know, give you that opportunity and take a look if you have an interest, because I think that's one of the things, and, and you tell me if you agree that I think one of the things that we're looking at, some of us who are getting on the later end of our careers, want to make sure that there are people who are newer to the field or younger and are jumping in because there's so much work that we're seeing that's going to be needed to be done. So we need folks to replace us, as it were, and come on board and and join our ranks because the opportunities are expanding as well. So I wanted to ask you, what do you see aligned with that is that you talked about some of the importance and some of the things that you're getting out of it. What would you say is of the value for a professional in providing that volunteer input um, in really to yourself and then maybe to 
a company that you support or if you're in a consultant, and then to the community as a whole, if you could touch on those points. I'm going to answer your question, but carry on from some of the points you were just making. Absolutely. Um, the, in fact, to that point, uh, we need the younger voices in. Uh, that is critical because this is, you know, don't want to do things just the way, the same that we've always done them. We need to keep current. We need to be current with technology, current with what's happening in the market, what's happening in the business world. Where are things going? So to that end, we've embraced that at the BCI. We've created a future leader role at the um, USA chapter level. They've just started it in Canada. And also the global board has created a future leader. And we just named the first one. And that is a direct effort to bring in that younger voice because we need to hear from everyone. You don't have to have 10 years of experience. I agree. In fact, we we all have different experiences and we can all learn from each other. So I think what what value do I get out of this? Um, what And what value does it bring to my, my company? Because, yes, it does take some time. When you volunteer, it, it, I, tr- I do the balance between my, my paying job, my day job, and my volunteer work. Uh, but there are times when you know, I've got to do them at the same time. You know, you just have to balance that out. Um, first off, with your day job, make sure your boss knows what you're doing. Uh, I have to, every once in a while, say, oh, yeah, I haven't told the boss what I'm doing yet. Um, so boss, I'm doing da 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 And they're like, oh, okay. But I always make sure I'm delivering on my, jo- my day job. Right. Um, and that's true for any, any uh, profession. But it's, what does my company get back? And this is actually straight from my leadership's voice. I'm bringing back that insights into what's happening in the industry because resilience, continuity, uh, what we do as a profession, all the things that come into this into this spectrum, is not the core competency of most organizations. You know, it's not LexisNexis is not in the business of business continuity. Right. So but what I can bring back is what's happening across the globe with with respect to resilience. What are other large corporations doing? Other large technology corporations, what are they doing? Because I've been able to network with the my counterparts at AWS, at Oracle, at, you know, name your major technology vendor. Uh, that is a big plus because I can bring that back and say, this is what's happening across the world. So we can compare ourselves to um, how do we stack up? And that is actually what I found is we tend, everyone tends to be their own harshest critic as to how accomplished they are, right? Because we always think that everybody's doing something better than we are. And it's not just women do that. I think that's in general. We always think know that we could do better because we see all of our rewards. We see all of the gaps, right? But when you get out and you talk to people in the industry, what you what you learn is how do you really rack and stake against other people and other organizations? What are other companies doing? Um, and you can bring that back because you have learning about, I've seen a lot of things with um, various technologies that we may have heard about, at Lexus, but we hadn't embraced anything about that yet. And that's not even dealing with just resilience. Uh, it was more around uh, service management. I'll give you an example. ServiceNow is a service management uh, tool. And actually, I talked to a lot of people with ServiceNow. And before it became the premier choice, you know, we hadn't really looked at, but I brought, came back and said, oh, I just heard about this really cool stuff. And it does all the things that we need to be able to make, run our business, our IT infrastructure and operations, run it very good. And it, now I didn't make the choice. I, I may have influenced it some, but I was able to bring that information back. It's not a sales pitch. It's real life experience. You know, this is what companies are experiencing and bring that information in. I work for a technology company. I'm responsible for technical resilience. 
Mm-hmm. So uh, both the traditional I, disaster recovery and then uh, resilience in the cloud. So my whole life the last two years has been about cyber resilience and doing from scratch recovery. <laughs> and what does that mean? But talking with folks at AWS and others, well, years ago, I was in some of the conferences I was at because I was there representing the BCI. I talked to uh, Trevor. He was at Capital One at the time. He's now moved on to Dell. Uh, but, you know, it's I was learning about what they were doing at Capital One with AWS and coming in and doing testing and using Chaos Monkey and the various other things that they were doing. And I was able to bring back some information that we may not have heard about. Our engineers may have not been connected with those folks. So I was able to bring back contacts, contacts that they could reach out to that are not going through a provider. It's going directly to the people that are doing a like type work. So we could start building those relationships that help our business. So that those are some of the, the value that you can bring back, plus also sharing the research reports that the BCI does. Um, I provide, I download them and provide them to my business, and they have been really useful, especially the Horizon Scan, Emergency Communications, uh, the Crisis Management Report, and then the one that I just helped launch yesterday, uh, a year in review of 2023. That the great resources for information to get those sound bites that you need in dealing with your executive teams or other leaders in the organization that, you know, they haven't quite Got totally yet. leaned in. You know, yeah. they're, they're, they're not just there yet. Right. Uh, but we need, you know, you got them close. But, you know, you're still working to get that buy-in. Sometimes you can get those little nuggets that will be the aha moment for them and help them connect the right dots to get them in to, you know, get them to buy into what needs to be done. Because as we all know, we are facilitators. We don't own the business. We facilitate it. Therefore, the business owns what needs to be done. So any anything that we can do to help change how we speak so that we say the right words, we have to be, you know, good communicators, right? We could right. go a whole other topic on that. Absolutely. But you know, those are things I've learned when I've been working with other folks across the industry. I've been able to learn different things, techniques in communicating, learn to who am I talking to, who's my audience, and have that, ex- you know, exercise those skills with people in a non-threatening environment and then turn around and apply that in my day job. It's been a game changer for me. I've really been able to up my game because of what I have been able to do in a volunteer role. Thank you. So- Thank you so much, Alice, for those points. And I think they're key for consideration. And just to support what you're saying, definitely my experiences today, our C-suites want benchmarking. They are very curious to know where they are aligned with other companies when they're making decisions in our area or any area. So that's definitely something that you can gain from volunteer experience, as you're saying, is really that understanding of things that are happening, trends, business, and really being networked and keyed into that. And there's certainly many ways to do that, but networking groups and, and volunteering, I think, are two of the strongest ways, definitely, versus just good old Google, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and it just brings that <laughs> or your favorite up. GPT, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Which, hey, you know, that is another tool. But, you know, there are numerous times recently that I've been able to pick up the phone and talk to a colleague that I've, you know, had an experience with. And and exactly what you're talking about really brings that in. And I think the other aspect, and you may touch on this a little bit later, is, you know, as we're talking about our younger, um, you know, colleagues, talent coming in, is that ability to learn from others and really get that kind of bird's eye view that you wouldn't get maybe within your organization in the same way to give you some different perspectives. And I think the same for those of us with more experience is the ability to mentor and then to hear mm-hmm. new ideas. I think all of that is great. Well, hey, I'm going to ask you a question that I ask all of my guests, and that is what does resilience mean to you? Because this channel is all about business resilience and everything aligned with it. I want to hear your perspective because I think we all have a slightly different take. 
Resilience to me is being able to keep on going no matter what happens. It's not necessarily always, you know, restoring back to where we were. Um, in fact, this is something Michelle Turner shared at BCI World. Um, it's instead of, re- you know, going back and restoring back, it's going forward. And I'm not saying exactly what you said, but the concept is, is you know, we we recover, but we're recovering forward, not recovering back. And that is, that's, that's being resilient. It's, you know, you just, stuff happens. It's called life. And you don't have control of it all. So being able to uh, keep right on going, no matter what happens, and with that become, you have to be prepared, obviously. You have to know what, you have to know your business. You have to have done the homework ahead of time uh, to be able to do that. And I think that's what we all do. But yeah, it's just real simple. Be able to keep right on going, no matter what happens. Absolutely. And I really love the point that you made about it's not going back, right? Because that's a human desire is to go back to the way things were. And I think we had one of the biggest lessons over the last few years with COVID that that is not possible. (laughs) That's not what happens. And really helping our stakeholders, right? And those we engage with to really understand that. And like you said, I think volunteering can be a key aspect of that for all of us in the industry to really share our knowledge and to, as you said, be able to bring back those key points, you know, to our leadership and to our colleagues as we're working and focusing on resilience and helping them maybe bounce back better or bounce yes. back, you know, um, in a way that they are more prepared the next time that right. we have an, an issue or crisis come up. Um, else do you want to share with our audience today that we haven't gotten a chance to talk about yet? There's all kinds of things that we could talk about, but it's don't be afraid. Take the risk. It is worth it. Start small. It could be just a call goes out. How do you get involved? People ask me this all the time. I say, make sure you're getting the newsletters. Newsletters from BCI, Continuity Insights, DRJ, Disaster Resource Guide. Subscribe to Disaster Empire. Subscribe to other podcasts, you know, but start getting connected. And when the call for volunteers comes out, when we need help with either putting on an event or we need people to participate in a committee, you know, a group to go off and discuss a topic, raise your hand. Take the risk. It's worth it. You can't start learning until you take that first step. So to take a journey, you've got to take the first step. Take that first step. I did back in for, for B, from a BCI perspective, took that first step back in 2015. And I haven't stopped since. Hmm. And, and I, love what, I love volunteering. I love giving back. I love making a difference in other people's lives. So I have a servant heart. And it goes to my core values. Fun fact, I, I have four kids. They're all married. They're all <laughs> successful. Hallelujah. They're out of the house. They're taking <laughs> care of themselves and their children. And I've, as, I've got seven <laughs> grandchildren and counting. Wow. So <laughs> you're busy with that. <laughs> that, that is that that's my joy and uh, my favorite place to be other than with my grandkids is Playing the piano, which is why I have this fun. Nice. Um, I love playing the piano. I'm very active in my church. That is part of my, that's who I am. And when I do a quadrant, uh, like a, it looks like a SWAT quadrant, yeah. you know, there's my day job. There's, you know, there's my volunteering and uh, my fam, my family, the volunteering, and then my core values. So mm-hmm. it's, I break it up into those four quadrants and it's the, you know, my, what centers me and anchors me is my core values. And then day job pays the bills and family is why we do what we do. And then uh, the volunteering is where I get to expand. And when the day job might be a little slow or boring or I'm not happy, whatever's going on, because, you know, stuff happens. I have been able to grow and thrive through my volunteer roles. Mm -hmm. So it's the balance of the two. And uh, 
it helps just keep me energized, keep me motivated. So lean in, raise your hand, participate. Uh, Jump into the pool with us. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you so much for your insights. And that's what inspired the blog and and my podcast here. And I wanted just to add, you know, definitely committees, but if folks want to start locally too, there are local organizations or you could write an article or you could do what our colleague Jason Haas has really start out with and then adding some thoughts on LinkedIn for people to share and to get their reactions or it could be presenting if you've never presented before. I mean, lots of ways to volunteer your time, lots of ways to support the industry. And I really wanted to thank you so much for sharing that because I think it is, you know, such an important piece. You know, everyone has to look at their time, right, and capabilities, but but it really is so rewarding and is providing so much value to all of us to have you uh, doing what you're doing. So just wanted to thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing. Thank you for having me. It's been a total pleasure. Excellent. Thank you so much. And I'm going to have to have you come back on again, because I feel like we could have talked for hours. So, (laughs) Yeah. Just tell me when we'll do it. (laughs) Sounds great.